Welcome back to Turning Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really pleased to have Adam Taggart with me today. I had uh, spoken to a Adam in the past uh, when he was with uh, Peak Prosperity, but now he's uh, started something new that I've found to be very, very helpful to me as an investor. And that's why I'm really happy to have him on with me. It's uh, Wealthion is the name of his organization, and he provides interviews with some of the sharpest people in uh, on Wall Street uh, to help investors know how to navigate the troubling waters, the difficulties that we have ahead of us. Very, very helpful. Adam has understood that um, our educational system doesn't do a real great job of educating people about how to invest in the markets and so forth. And that's what he is attempting to do and doing very well, I might add, with Wealth Young. The YouTube videos are a must watch if you are serious about investing. Uh, Adam's background is an investment banker. He worked on, in Silicon Valley uh, before that company was taken over. He also achieved a top marketing spot of vice president of marketing for Yahoo, uh, for all of North America, in fact. And as I said, now he's really helping people understand the markets and how to how to invest in some very i say i would say some very um challenging markets uh, adam thank you so much for joining me oh gosh it's my pleasure jay um it's a real honor to be on this program uh having been watching and a big fan of yours for many many years so it's a big milestone for me well i think i'm a bigger fan of yours now and uh <laughs> i'm just so grateful that you could spare a few minutes because i know you're very very busy and i look forward every week to seeing your your new videos uh, coming out. So, you know, you like to start out by asking your, um, you like to ask your guests, what is your current assessment of the, of the markets and, and the global economy? Uh, I think maybe I would like to ask you that, but perhaps I just simply ask you uh, to comment on something you recently, you, a new video that you re put out just recently on how the rules of investing are changing. Perhaps you could comment on that. Sure. Um... So uh, where to start here? So uh, the I think back to a book title that that David Stockman wrote coming out of uh, the great financial crisis. Right. Uh, it was called the Great Deformation, mm -hmm. and I think that's a fantastic word for where we are right now. Um, we have an economy that is um, really kind of mired in slow growth. And um, but we have an entire system that's dependent upon kind of perpetual forever economic growth and ideally strong economic growth. So we have a we have kind of an economy that is sort of shuddering and sputtering and uh, and we have a financial market system uh, that in a in a regular world would, would reflect that. Um, but it doesn't because uh, all the powers that are you know, currently in place are desperately trying to um, push the fantasy that uh, that we do have this perpetual strong economic growth engine um, when of course we we don't we have some really real uh, secular issues that that you know really should be dealt with and, and discussed openly um, but we're not doing that right now we, we have a lot of uh, central planner intervention in the markets to make things look an awful lot rosier than they are. And that's been going on for a long time. Um, I'm sure most of the people watching this program are familiar with what the Fed and the other world central banks did coming out of the last great recession uh, in terms of uh, you know, the, the printing of money, uh, you know, all the different QE, the Fed's different QE programs, all the you know, strangely named uh, acronym programs, TARP, TALF, all that type of stuff. Um, and uh, then of course, you know, that was going on for the better part of a decade uh, coming out of, of uh, you know, 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And then we had the, uh, the coronavirus, right, which uh, threw an entire monkey wrench in the spanner. And Jay, you know, if you and I had been sitting down, uh, you know, having a drink together in March of 2020, witnessing what was going on then, and somebody told us, hey, guys, don't worry. <laughs> a year later, the S&P is going to be more than double where it is right now. Um, and uh, the central banks will, would have printed, you know, tens of trillions of dollars of, of the, would have been tens of trillions of dollars of both monetary and fiscal stimulus around the world. 
and, and everything would kind of still be working as normal. We would never, ever have believed it. Um, so, but that's just sort of a, a sign of the scale of the deformation that's going on right now to keep asset prices where they are and to keep this fiction and fantasy alive that all's well, everything is awesome. And as an investor, you should just be fully long these markets. And so the big question you know, that this all raises is, well, how long can this continue for, exactly. right? Yeah, th things are being so distorted, so deformed to use Stockman's world. Um, you know, you either have to believe that this time is different and they can do it forever. And as an investor, you just have to, uh, you know, borrow from Dr. Strangelove, you just have to learn uh, to love the bubble, right? And, and jump in whole hog. Um, or, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself, okay, you know, if this does have an expiration date, um, what are the repercussions of that going to be? And how close are we? And what do I need to be doing now in advance to make sure that I don't become roadkill when this whole unsustainable system, um, you know, has its day of reckoning? So that's in large part why I launched Wealthion was there are a ton of people out there um, who understand at least elements of what we're talking about here, Jay. And they're just trying to figure out what to do. And it's a really hard, really complicated question. And again, it's not really being discussed openly in you know major network news, nightly news reports, things like that. You watch CNBC, you watch Fox Business, you read the Wall Street Journal. You're not really getting this story, right? So these people are trying hard to, to educate themselves. And what I'm trying to do is just to bring in the experts around the world that see at least you know their own section of pieces of this puzzle so that you know the educated and the self-educating investor can collect those pieces together hopefully get the broad view and then take uh relevant steps coming off of that um the uh but then there's a whole bunch of other people that don't even know this is going on right oh, so that's sure. yeah. <laughs> that, that's again don't. Yeah, but part of what Wealthion is there for is to help the average person, you know, maybe become aware of this exactly. and at least begin to ask the question, wow, should I just be fully long this market the way that I've been for the past 10, 20, 30 years and continue to place my faith in it? And you know what, if, if your answer to that question at the end of the day is, yes, I'm going to continue doing that, I'm totally fine with that, as long as you're making that an educated decision um but just sort of you know hook line and sinker buying into the fantasy that's that's continued uh to being sold to us i think it's a very dangerous thing to do um so it's a long-winded answer to your question but basically what i'm trying to do is help people understand the new rules of the game in this era of great deformation right uh well you certainly have had some balance on your show as well i think you had a uh, a recent interview with a former colleague of yours, uh, who is, she said that she's very, uh, she's very bullish on risk. Um, well, I think she probably echoes the mainstream more than, more than, uh, you know, what you're hearing. Uh, I know you tried to get some balance on your, uh, in, uh, on your perspective so that people who are really bullish wouldn't be, you know, totally uh, upset with you. But uh, clearly uh, you are pointing out, I think what the educational system isn't pointing out, in fact, you know, we once were much more of a free market uh, economy. We, we really strayed away from that to a great extent. The Keynesians, I think, got us down the wrong path in my way of thinking, allowing money to be created, governments to spend, uh, allowing us to live beyond our means, thinking that we could never have to really worry too much. We were, we were the United States of America. We can always, you know, we, we're this powerful a country that can do whatever it wants and we started creating money and printing money but talk to us a little bit about how the rules of investing are changing now i know i watched part of your short relatively short interview that i would really or, uh, actually it wasn't an interview it was i think you were just explaining how the rules of the uh, of the game are changing and in the investment climate and uh, i thought it was very good but maybe you could just go into that to tell people you know how how the markets have been so screwed up by by the central bankers um, and you know how people can ready themselves for what's going to take place or what we figure will take place and also uh, how to actually perhaps profit from from what's uh, what's what lies ahead i'll i'll be happy to um yeah so in between the interviews when i get a chance i like to put out these little explainer videos to try to just condense some key points for folks um so i'll, I'll talk about that in just a second but i, I want to sort of 
put my finger on an important point you, you mentioned there, Jay, which was, um, you know, we have lived beyond our means for way too long. And essentially what we've done here, both, um, both on the, uh, you know, the currency expansion side, which is sort of the blame I lay at the central banks, particularly the Fed, um, but also on the debt side, um, where we've, we've been profligate in the uh, tremendous amount of debt that the, the country has built up over the past decades. And that's been happening at an accelerating rate. When you do both of those things, you're basically pulling tomorrow's prosperity into today. Um, <clears throat> and so what, what I think is so important to understand, and I really think sort of so nefarious to, for lack of a better word, about our current policies is um, they are stealing prosperity from future generations to fund today's profligacy. Um, but they're not funding that, that profligacy equally. Um, in fact, it is going increasingly into the pockets of a, a, a very few people, and they're the top few people. They're the people that own all the assets and the people that have all the power and influence in the system. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, so we end up with this great and accelerating wealth inequality. And that really, you know, concerns me for a whole bunch of reasons. It's incredibly, you know, unjust. Uh, but it's the kind of things that basically ruin societies. And, it, and it's done so all throughout history. And so if you look at the trajectory that we're going on right now, if we do not change course and change course pretty radically, we basically have a, a, a predictable, inevitable date with a breaking point where the bottom majority of society basically they have no other option but to rise up and say look this system just isn't working for us anymore and that's when you get really concerning civil unrest i'm talking about sort of things like we saw during the arab spring uh you know a little over a decade ago you know when when, when sort of the average worker can't put enough food on the table can't keep their family warm in the winter, that type of stuff. They really have no other choice but to take to the streets. And, you know, we're not exactly there yet, but I think a lot of the social protests, demonstrations, and certainly the violence that's erupted a lot of them, I think the common factor underlying them, even if the actual protesters don't, don't actively maybe perhaps even realize it, it is it's sourced in that inequity and, and that inequity is growing. So I just want to make sure that, that folks, you know, are really clear about that is that I think kind of the, the, the access that all of this is, is, is pivoting around. Um, in terms of how the, the investing game has changed, um, uh, once you, you know, th th there's a limit. Once you pull, uh, you, you keep pulling uh, prosperity from the future in, into the present, uh, you, you begin to get to a point of diminishing returns where you basically pulled all the prosperity in that you can. And that means that um, the sort of inexorable year after year after year of gains of hitting all time high after all time high after all time high, which essentially, Jay, is what we've conditioned today's investors to expect. Yeah. Yeah. They expect you know, that it's easy. You, know, you just go along the market and the market takes care of you. And if there's a blip, the central planners will stick it, uh, step in and they'll fix it for you. So, you know, if there's a dip, you better buy it, right? Um, that gets, that, that the, the ability to bring that future prosperity in gets uh, squeezed and squeezed out of the system until there are no more future gains to be had and you're left with a very unstable system. So uh, I had John Hussman on the program not too long ago, who is, is probably one of the most um, famous and certainly most uh, learned uh, investors uh, of sort of navigating the bubbles that we've had to uh, live through in our lifetimes. So John both recognized the dot-com and the, uh, the 2008 housing bubbles and uh, not only recognize them for what they were in advance, but positioned his fund and his investors in a place to take advantage of them. Um, and John is, is now saying we're looking at the you know, biggest bubble basically ever, biggest, asset, biggest speculative asset price bubble in modern history is the one that, that we're now currently dealing with. Um, he produces an awful lot of excellent charts and analysis on his website, um, Hussman.com. And uh, there's one chart that he has, uh, several charts, but one, one phenomenal chart is a historic scatter plot, basically showing um, the 12-year ex the, the expected returns based upon um, current market conditions. And what that chart now, that scatter plot is predicting right now is 
a negative 6% annual return for the next 12 years. Sure. So when I say that the investing game has changed, really the, what I want to say is the, what I'm trying to say is the era of gains is over. At least the era of easy gains for everything is coming to an end. And so the question an investor needs to ask themselves there is, okay, if, if appreciation is not going to drive wealth building going forward, what is? Uh -huh. And um, in that explainer video that I talked about, um, I, I, I really kind of refocus on what has driven uh, wealth building over time in the financial markets, which predominantly has been income. Dividends. It's been dividend income or it's been interest income on, on bonds. Um, and uh, from 1980 until 2019, I have a chart in that video that shows that 75% of the total return of the S&P 500 has come from stock dividends and not from price appreciation, even though there had been a prodigious amount of price appreciation. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that, that um, you know, really underscores um, how uh, kind of you know, distorted and distracted we as investors have become. Because if you talk to any investor today, all they're trying to do is get the next you know, stock that's going to pop, the next meme stock, the next crypto that's going to go bananas, the next Tesla, the next Rivian, et cetera. Um, when really you know, his, history says they should be looking instead at the yield uh, of the instruments that they're buying into. But going forward into this new future that I just outlined, when um, it looks increasingly like future gains are gonna be harder and harder to come by, that investing for income becomes much more important. And then there's there's one last thing I'll mention, Jay, and then I'll, I'll let you get back, to, get back to asking your next question because I know I've been talking for a long time here, but is inflation. You know, inflation has really changed the game here. I mean, inflation was something that, that I and many others have been con concerned about for the past 10 years sure. based upon uh, of all the, uh, the policies of the central banks, you know, which have basically been sort of courting inflation with all of this currency printing that they've been doing. Um, but it really hasn't manifested in a, a very material way until this you know, massive amount of printing that they've done since uh, the coronavirus. And of course, everybody watching now uh, is familiar with what's happened this year in terms of uh, the cost of living, and uh, uh, you know it, it's um, it's really beginning to become uh, not just a, a, a real household issue where people are realizing, wow, my dollars are going a lot uh, going a lot less uh, far than they used to, but it's also becoming a, a big political issue as well. And the Fed is actually finally beginning to get get some blowback about this. But make no mistake, the inflation genie is out of the bottle at this moment. And so there's another question you have to ask yourself, which is, okay, if, if the inflation monster is increasingly beginning to eat at my purchasing power, what can I do to stay ahead of that? And getting access to inflation adjusting income streams is a huge part of that equation. So just to put a bow on all this for the listeners here, um, if you wanna get a sense of, of what I mean by the specifics of ways to invest for um, inflation adjusting income, you can go watch that video on Wealthion. Um, but at the end of the video, it's relatively short, as Jay said, I drive people to a free report where we basically walk through all the most common options for building inflation adjusting income streams, um, which I think this is just a good resource to use to either sit down with your financial advisor or give you some ideas on how you might wanna to begin to implement some of these in your portfolio. You can go get that uh, free report, totally free, at wealthion.com slash income. Um, and Jay, that's just a big thing of what we try to do here with Wealthion is when I can, I try to end an interview with a free resource that people can go and dive more deeply into the right. topic of the interview if they want to. Right, and it's very valuable and, and folks should really do that. So I guess you're looking at maybe something like tips, You'll, you know, people can go to get uh, exact ideas, but tips are, are good dividends that will keep up with inflation uh, some sort of source of ongoing income, uh, you know, with inflation rising, then I guess the dynamics behind what you're saying, the driver is with, with rising inflation, you almost have to see interest rates going up. Eventually, the Fed will try to fight it, no doubt, as long as it can. It will try to, I don't know, try to do whatever it can to keep the, uh, the appearance, at least, of interest rates from rising. But the cost of capital is going up. And I think this is maybe a key to what you're talking about in terms of a switch from what I would say is growth to value. Is that what yep. we're talking about? So we're gonna to have to start to look at, uh, as investment analysts, we're gonna to have to start to look at companies 
that are really generating free cash flow. The companies that have the fundamentals to survive uh, a rising in interest environment, perhaps. Uh, am I on the right track there? You're exactly on the right track. Yep. So I think it's a switch from sort of high flying growth to right now what I would call deep value companies. Um, and, uh, you know, there are a number of charts out there. I was just interviewing the guys from Crescent Capital, who yes. are wonderful chart producers, and they've got a great chart basically showing the historical cycles between uh, growth and value. And we are at an apex right now where uh, the pendulum is weighted all towards the high flying growth companies. Um, I expect very much, and even just looking at the chart, it looks like we've sort of just passed peak, right? So I expect a, a swing back of the pendulum um, for all the reasons that we've, we've talked about here. I think the other thing I would add to it as well is um, from an investing standpoint, you're going to see capital begin to move, um, rotate is the, the term they use on Wall Street. I might actually say flee. Um, uh, you know, assets that basically can be inflated to infinity uh, mm -hmm. and instead try to find a home in, in assets that have intrinsic value that cannot be inflated away. Mm -hmm. um, and commodities are a great example of that, hard assets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, just going back to the Crescent guys, um, you know, they think the commodity complex um, is, is highly ripe for a very long secular bull market here for a whole variety of reasons. But uh, again, Crescent publishes a great chart um, that shows the relative valuation of the commodity complex versus the S&P 500. And it is still at a nadir. Um, you know, it's raising a little bit with some of the increases in commodity costs uh, this year, but still very much uh, down in the trough. So that has a long way to go before it even gets to kind of a mid range. Um, so I expect a big up cycle there as capital goes into those commodity plays. Um, and then within the commodity markets themselves, lots of great opportunities. But um, the sector that is least valued compared to the overall commodity complex itself is the precious metals sector. Right. And those companies are now very cash flow uh, healthy um, in a way they haven't been for a long time. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity in the, uh, the precious metals mining space. Um, and uh, and, and you know, we haven't even talked about sort of the, the potential for the precious metals themselves to pop a lot here because they're the obvious defense against monetary inflation, right? So you could have, uh, you could really see some tremendous gains in that space for all the reasons we just talked about. Absolutely. And uh, if you look at gold itself in terms of the amount of money that's been created, I think the case can be made that it's selling as cheaply as it was in at $35 or so in the 1970s. And then again, in the early 2000s, I think I know the chart you're talking about, or uh, one similar to, well, uh, it's it's a, a chart that someone put out. I don't believe it was the Crescat guys, but it shows that essentially that gold, when measured in terms of the monetary dilution of the dollar, that it is selling as cheaply as now as it was in the early 2000s when it was at $250. So that's pretty incredible. And then you have, as you're saying, the Crescat guys, by the way, we've had them on this show. Uh, they do a wonderful job of providing that. And uh, people viewing this video and, and listening to this show should go to uh, to Wealthion, and you can watch the uh, the uh, uh, the interviews that you did with uh, Tavi Costa and uh, and Kevin Smith, and I would strongly urge people to do that. The wonderful charts; they make a great case. And um, I should mention that uh, Quentin Henning, who is also on the show today, is their chief geologist, and he is, I think, probably the best exploration geologist in the world, one of the best, anyway. And he has a number of companies, a number of uh, projects uh, with these exploration companies that Crescat invests in that I think are going to be household name companies in the not too distant future. So I, I can't say enough good about Crescat and all they're done. I was so happy to see that you had interviewed those guys, uh, Adam, because they're just, they're just top notch. Um, I don't know uh, what else, we've, there's so much to talk to you about. I don't know where we could, I mean, you mentioned, <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Just one thing I'd love to, to, to interject with, because I'm, I'm sure some viewers have been asking this in their head. Um, you know, I, I, for all the reasons we discussed, I, I believe that in, investing for income, particularly inflation adjusting income, is going to become um, much more essential going forward. Right. Um, I think it'll become the dominant way to invest over the next decade, is, is, is my prediction. Um, but I think a good question for you know, investor to ask today is, okay, great, but do I want to be buying into these companies right now 
with the system as unstable as it is. In other words, a lot of people, I think, who are skeptical of these markets, they fear a substantial market correction. And um, many of the people, the experts that I interview every week, I would say the preponderance of them expect some sort of material market correction within the next right. year or so. And I've seen estimates of anywhere from over 20% uh, to, you know, you get guys like David Hunter and they, they expect an 80% market correction, you know, which, which sounds pretty apocalyptical, but it is not unprecedented. No. Um, so, you know, w- one thing I just sort of want to underscore for why I think your show, Jay, is important and why I started my show is we're all just working in the, the world of probabilities here, right? Nobody right. has the crystal ball. Exactly. Um, we're all just trying to, you know, bring the, the best brain trust together we can uh, and try to get a sense for what everybody is thinking and to see, okay, you know, given the collective probabilities, what do we think is most likely to happen here? Um, so one thing I think you do have to be cognizant of right now is, you know, where valuations may go tomorrow versus where they are today. Right. Um, and so I'm not necessarily, you know, advocating that everybody rush out today and, and put their money into, you know, high dividend yielding stock um, because that dividend yielding stock might might be cut in half, you know, sure. uh, in six months or whatnot. Um, and so, uh, you know, I like to I use, I'm going to use that word. Well, I will use the word nefarious again, which I brought up. Um, but I'll also say that these are the most treacherous markets, certainly in my you know, living experience for investors because of all the different cross currents that are out there right now um, and, and the instability. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more volatility going forward. And so um, where I'm going with all of this is um, I, I think you need to, you know, look at income, but you need to think of it as sort of like a marathon versus a sprint. You know, I'm not going to move just all my capital right now from these, you know, long these growth stocks to, to long these deep value stocks. I want to come up with a plan and that plan probably should include you know, keeping some money in reserve as dry powder right, uh, right. to be able to deploy later on. Right. Um, and for your long positions, um, at least your substantial ones, um, employing hedges, right? And a lot of people don't really know what that means. Um, and, uh, or, or even if they kind of do, they don't have a lot of experience doing it. Um, and so I highly, highly recommend working under the guidance of a professional financial advisor sure. um, who is experienced using them and can kind of help you create that, that plan that we talked about and help you deploy it and help you intelligently use hedges where they make sense along the way. Um, I, I did do another video, one of these explainer ones um, mm-hmm. on Wealthion called How to Hedge Against a Market Correction, where I kind of introduce and walk through the major tools that you can use as hedges. That video as well sends you to a, a free report. Uh, it's wealthion.com slash uh, how to hedge, I believe is the uh, the uh, URL for that. And uh, I, again, I think that's a really good you know, resource, print it out, read it, send it to your financial advisor and just say, hey, you know, should I be using some of these uh, tools here in my strategy going forward? Um, so, you know, just again, sort of trying to wrap this up. Um, what the, the the central planners have done here by, you know, distorting these markets, deforming asset prices, pushing them to all time record highs, while the fundamentals are kind of rotting away beneath them. Right. I, I liken it to like pushing people out uh, you know, like a pirate ship plank, you know, with a, a sword point at their back, right? Where we're doing that to people, pushing them out along the risk curve where they can't get, you know, if you're, if you're trying to live on a fixed income or whatnot, you know, you you're save up to buy a house or whatnot, you, you, you can't get a living return. You can't get a, a return that's going to, you know, let you save up to buy a house, uh, by being in traditionally safe investments, by being in a bank savings account or being in treasuries or whatnot. So um, people are getting forced further out into um, degrees of risk that they really don't have any business being in, but it's the only way in which they can get either the appreciation you know, or, or they can get the return that they believe that they need. And that works fine right up until the point that it doesn't. <laughs> you know, when the system breaks, yeah. you have the, the most vulnerable people way out there on the risk curve where they have no business being and they get hurt the most. Right. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to underscore here for folks is there are th- th- there's a lot of uncertainty in this space. Um, I think you, you do have to a have skepticism that today's ever increasing asset valuations aren't going to increase. 
income is going to become more important, but you got to kind of progressively, you know, work your way into that, that, uh, that new type of portfolio, because you could position for it hundred percent today, but there might be developments that happen along the way that wipe right. you out before you're proven right. Right. Well, that's where I think you're, you're very helpful, Adam, uh, with Wealthion, and, and there's a, an abundance of resources that you're making available to people. I want to thank you very much for that and, and for taking the time uh, to, to share your insights with us. And I mean, there were so many questions and so many people that you've interviewed. I had uh, ideas that, to talk to you about, uh, but we don't have the time. We're, we're out of time <laughs> for sure. Uh, but I want to thank you. So I guess people just go to Wealthion.com is the best place to start connecting with you. Yeah, there's, there's sort of three places I would send folks that are interested in learning more. Um, if you want to watch the videos, I would go to youtube.com slash Wealthion. Right. All the videos are there. And that's Wealth, I-O-N. So youtube.com slash Wealthion is where you can go to watch all the videos. If you want to talk to a financial advisor who has a very similar mindset to the issues that and risks that Jay and I have been talking about here, you know, it's amazing um, how many people are frustrated because they can't talk about these issues with their current you know, brokers Absolutely. who just sort of have the standard mindset, right? Absolutely. So we have, we've created partnerships. It's taken us a long time, uh, but we've created partnerships with uh, a few firms, a few independent financial firms uh, that share the same exact same concerns we do. They build portfolios um, you know, in mind for the things that I've been mentioning here. So if you want to have just a free consultation with them, there's no obligation to work with them. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, they just do this as a pure public service because they want to help people like you get better positions so that you don't become roadkill if indeed some of these things that we're talking about happen. Uh, just go to Wealthion.com. There's a little form uh, you can fill out there. It takes like 10 seconds to fill it out. And you can have a half hour conversation with these guys. Like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no commitment to work with them. Uh, it's just pure education. So that's resource number two. Resource number three is if you want to get sort of my commentary uh, throughout the day, as well as my summarization mm -hmm. of the experts that I talk to every week, just follow me on Twitter. And that's at Menlo Bear. Absolutely. And I certainly do that. And uh, again, thank you so much for being with us, Adam. It's uh, delightful to have you. Um, I hope we can do it again sometime in the not too distant future. Whenever you watch, Jay, it's a pleasure to talk to a fellow, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, connector in this space where I don't think I've really got any, you know, special lock on what's going to happen in the future. My job is just to connect viewers with the brain trust of experts out there. And uh, you're a guy who I've, uh, I've, I've been trying to emulate. So thank you for setting the bar high. Well, you may not have a lock, but, uh, but uh, you certainly have a lot of people, I, I think, combining everybody that you're interviewing, I think. You're providing a tremendous service for people. It's just, I'm very thankful to you. So we'll have to leave it go at that, Adam, but uh, again, sometime soon, I hope. Um, folks, that is it for uh, today. Next week, um, my guest will be John Rubino of Dollar Collapse and uh, Patrick Highsmith will be with us to talk about Firefox Gold and uh, all they're doing uh, with their exploration project. So don't go, so we'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye and God's blessings to you.